Hello everybody and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In today's video, we're gonna start marking out the tenons to fit in the mortises that we cut in the previous video. Let's get going. Rightio, first things first, we need to cut the rails to their final size. And here's just a generic bit of advice that definitely will catch you out when you tackle either this project or a future project that involves tenons. When you're reading the working drawing, remember that you're not cutting the component to that shoulder length because by doing that, you then haven't got enough material for the tenons either side. So make sure to account for that when you're sizing tenon components. I've tried to make that as clear as possible on the plans that are available for this cabinet. Don't let it catch you out. So first, let's see how deep those mortises actually ended up being. Oh, blimey. 24 millimeters on that one. Should be pretty much the same. Yep, 24, 25, and 24. That's good, okay. So let's quickly get those styles into position and then measure the distance between them. So I've got 159 here. Okay, so then we've got 159 plus the length of two tenons, which would be 48. So then that makes something, so 17, uh, 207. So 207 is the overall size of the rails, which is the distance between the two styles here plus the length of two tenons. Next, we'll set a marking gauge to 24 millimeters, the overall length of the tenon, and we'll scratch it around all four sides, both ends of both components. All right, and obviously at this point, it's good to check your components, check that they're exactly the same length and that those shoulder lines are bang on in line with one another because you really don't want an out of square door at this point or at any point for that matter. All right, so this would be a good point to work out which way you want your rails to be. Obviously, you haven't got a lot of choice here because the face side needs to be up on these because we've used that as our reference face either when cutting the grooves by hand or using the router table. And of course, you need to have the groove on the inside. So you can only swap them around at this point. But in this case, I've got a tiny defect on the top here, which I'm actually gonna put at the top of the door because the plinth at the top will kind of shroud it a little bit and it won't be seen. Whereas the bottom of the door is more central in the cabinet and is probably more likely to be seen. So I'm choosing the nicer bit for that. So I'm just gonna quickly transfer the markings. I've gone for A, B, C, D on this, but you could choose whatever you want. So now at this point, we want to start scribing the two lines over the top of the tenon to give us the final width. And you've got a couple of ways to do this. If you've got a mortise gauge, then it's great because you can just lock the offset on both those heads and then scratch them around at once. Or if you've got just a normal marking gauge, you can do it this way. You just need to reset it halfway through. And so I'll show you how to do it with this for the time being, because that's most likely what a lot of you have. So let's do this corner B first. So we're gonna get the marking gauge and reference it against the face side. Then we're gonna set the cutter to be on the closest side of the mortise. Double check it. Note that shifted, so let's just move it back slightly. Good, okay, so referencing from the face side, that's now hitting that corner perfectly. In fact, you can see it kind of splintering. So with that now locked in, we're gonna reference off the face side of the rail and scratch that all the way around. So you're not gonna be able to do much here because that's going in the groove, but we can go around the top like that and we can obviously go around here. Always referencing off that face side. I cannot stress this enough. If you fail to do this, your groove won't line up, your components won't line up, you won't be able to get the panel in and your door will be twisted if you do manage to get it in. So really, really make sure you get this right. So we've done it to the first wall. Now let's reset it and do it to the far side. Still referencing off that face side and then scratch that round, referencing off the face side and then that will do the far side of the tenon. And then we essentially repeat that process for all three of the remaining joints. Now of course in theory what I should be able to do here is simply lock the marking gauge to that front wall and then scratch that round all four tenons and then lock it to the back wall and then scratch that round all four tenons. And I have no doubt that would turn out accurately afterwards. The reason I'm doing it individually is just in case one of these mortises is slightly out of line. Probably not going to be the case seeing as I'd buzzed it through the router table and I had that groove to line up the mortise. But if you've done this by hand, you never know. They might be slightly misaligned and you might as well try and cancel that misalignment out by doing each of them individually rather than just lock it to one of them and hope that the remaining three are exactly the same offset as that first one. You never know.
Okay, and then finally we need to mark out the little nub that sticks out beyond the shoulder line to fill out this area here. The technical name for this little bit is called the haunch. And so to do that is nice and simple. Simply double check the depth of the groove on all four corners of the styles just to ensure it's consistent all the way around. Bang on six millimeters in all these cases, which is good. And so then on the rails, on the opposite side to the groove, we're gonna measure six millimeters across from the shoulder line, put a little mark there and then square that across. Now, in some instances, it's good to square this haunch line down the side as well, but because we're gonna be cutting down here first and then cutting off these cheeks, any marking out we do on the side here it's just going to be removed later, so there's no point. What we do have, however, is this nice line across the top, which will be retained, and we'll be able to get our chisel in that afterwards and just knock down. And so now we've got the line squared across the top for the haunch, and we've got the two over the top of the tenon to account for the width. Now we've just got to do the seven millimeters down from the top to account for the height of the haunch. And just to make sure I was clear on that, the seven millimeters is to account for this bit of material here to ensure that the tenon is able to step over that and then down into the mortise. Let me just double check that is in fact seven millimeters because it might have been bruised. Yeah, seven mil. I'll just check it on all of them because then I can use that as a universal setting. Again, if the height of that haunch wasn't consistent and some were six and some was eight, then you want to set that marking gauge independently for each of them and scratch that round the corresponding rail. And so now with that seven millimeter offset referencing from the face edge, you then want to scribe that across the end grain of each side of the rail. And like, if you want, you can scribe this down the side as well as the haunch. If you think it gives you a better visual representation of what you're cutting away, then by all means go for it. But just remember when you cut off those cheeks, all of the marking gauge lines here will disappear anyway. So you're not exactly gonna be able to use them, but it might help for visual purposes, I don't know. So there you go, I've drawn the side profile on this one just so you can see kind of what you're going for. So seven millimeters down, that was six millimeters across. So that's the depth of the haunch. And then I think we said the overall size of the tenon top to bottom was 17 millimeters. And obviously if you measure that, that is now 23. But by the time you cut off these cheeks and that groove underneath is exposed, that will then drop in six millimeters. This will all become waste and then you'll be left with a 17 millimeter tenon. But don't worry if you're a little bit lost at this point, it will all make sense in the next episode where we get sawing and chiseling these tenons to size and begin fitting them within the mortises. So we're gonna call the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and you can move on to the next lesson by clicking the button below. I'll see you then.